Thank you, everyone. Um, let me just say that I wasn't exactly sure what I was meant to do here today. So not to say I didn't get, get direction, but I wasn't sure what I would show you today. So I'm going to give you a little um, overview of things that I've done in my life. And in my, you know, it's just things that I've done and, and how I've got to this moment. But um, it has connections to hopefully what you're all doing, and I'm sure there's some more impressive work here than I could ever do, but um, I, like, like Alejandro said, I sort of see myself in both camps as, a, as a, an artist, but also a, a, an organizer, a connector, a sort of a initiator of things. So I'll just get on with it. I, I, I have, have a background. My first part of my, my career, if you will, was in music as a pop, you know, indie rock artist, and then uh, I got into modern dance, and you'll see when it kind of wakes up some of the things that I was involved in. And over time, um, when I was going back to, to do my master's degree, I thought I would be involved in, this is like 2000, I mean, the beginning of the internet and things were happening, uh, I thought I'd get involved in online communities, and as soon as I went to the university, um, the university is Simon Fraser, well, it wasn't Simon Fraser then, but Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, I met these two amazing women who were combining computer science and dance. And this is where it all began. So I'm, I'm going to start with that premise where uh, computer science and dance was sort of my introduction to this world. So my, if we start at the bottom, this is sort of how my, my practice <coughs> evolved. And um, curating, I was uh, <coughs> invited to be part of the curatorial team in 2002 of the New Forms Festival in Vancouver. And that's also, this is my dance, 1987. Uh, and I got into video and 3D and curating and my pop band. So I got all in interested in all these different things. Um, and music. Um, my first interest in sort of curating some, well, besides the New Forms Festival, which was three years of multidisciplinary kinds of electronic and, and digital art. Um, I then started a new com uh, organization that was around performance and <coughs> digital technologies and trying to find different ways of exploring that. We had this, before the iPhone came out, we did these little iPod film festival um, activities. So this is kind of a history lesson as <laughs> well. Um, but then I went on to do my master's degree and was really interested. These two women who I met were doing a lot of work with physiological sensors. And um, so I got really interested in this idea of how do we how can we make an um, immersive experience where someone can be, um, let's say, they can be put into a hypnagogic state, I don't know if everyone knows what that is, but a dream, pre-dream, not dream, but a pre-dream state where they can then be enabled to be telepathic. And so I tried to do these semi-pseudo-experimental um, activities where I got people wired up with physiological sensors and I made this sort of, um, little womb, kind of, um, uh, or a little safe space and projected video that was responding to the breath and to um, heartbeat and galvanic skin response. And as I said, I was working with these two women in the Whispers project, and they were doing an early wearables art project um, around sharing data. So this massive RFID chip here um, they were threading uh, different technologies inside these kind of uh, colorful skirts. Um, and of course, it, it wasn't wireless yet, so it was just before Wi-Fi and, um, sorry, just before Bluetooth came along. And then I, came, I got into the um, digital media program in a place called The Smart Lab in uh, London. It was part, initially it was part of Central St. Martins, and then it moved as a PhD program that was kind of run by this ideology of, of giving people, um, helping people get PhDs in performance and technology. 
And so it ended up in um, University of East London where I joined it and I was exploring this idea of how do we send this uh, a sense of liveness and presence through the technologies. And this is in 2006, so the iPhone had just come out and I didn't use it yet because I had no idea what it was about. But I was using something called the Nokia N95. Anybody old enough to know that one? <laughs> so I was actually, had, but most people didn't have video phones So uh, in 2006. So I had to buy a bunch of N95s and do these workshops where I brought people together to collect um, video. And I, I do these, immer I do these um, <coughs> guided visualization workshops where they'd be lying on the phone, on the floor, and I guide them through this visualization like a meditation, and then I gave them a number of prompts, and I have them take the phones out and make video that was about what's happening in the body and the mind. And I would collect all that video, and I was making it into something that could be DJ'd or VJ'd um, through the network. So we had a, um, a server, and we were trying to broadcast it back out to the internet, which wasn't quite possible. There were small uh, companies doing this sort of mobile video at the time, but it was not quite, quite possible. But we did sort of a a version of it, let's say, <laughs> with a database of all these interesting videos and the ideas that were simulating telepathy. So I was taking this thread of telepathy from my master's into my PhD, but how do we simulate the, the, sen the sensation and the, the experience of telepathy, by, but in a completely nonverbal, sort of visual, abstract way? It was semi successful, and the idea was also to make it performative that people could be doing this. Um, and sharing this performance was happening online and may not be happening in real life. They might be sitting in a cafe, they might be, you know, whatever, but this performance is happening somewhere live. And so, for example, people doing it in weird spaces. And then I moved on. Um, what I discovered is these are kind of my areas of interest. So, nonverbal, connecting bodies, connecting minds, consciousness, telepathy, embodying uh, the technology expanding the senses and more and more these are where I find myself so in between spaces. Um, so I finished my PhD and I was in academia and I happened to be at the right place at the right time at Brunel University at the time in London and I was invited to, oh this is a lot of time, I was invited to help curate an exhibition at the ICT 2013 uh, in Vilnius, um, and I was, became part of this first pre-starts, we're calling it pre-starts project, where we were trying to show the commission that artists uh, and technologists working together can create something amazing. Um, and so we went around Europe and tried to get people together and do residencies and try to show the commission, look at the great work do when they get together. Um, so this is, yeah, we had a, even a meeting before this in 2012 in Brussels, and this is what it came to, and there was follow-ons, and this is where we are now with the start. So this was kind of the beginning of it. We talked to the commission, etc. Um, and I was invited to do something um, at a TEDx in Brighton to talk about this, some of these ideas, but also um, some of the things I was hatching at the time was how to bring a network of artists and designers together with technologists to create more ethical and sustainable wearable technology and textiles as I had hatched this group, which I'll tell you about again in a minute, which was, which was doing that on a London level and I wanted to expand it to beyond that. Meanwhile, I was also working on this project with a dancer, a choreographer, movie artist, uh, Kate Sikio, and we were looking at ways of um, working with e-textiles, uh, electronic textiles um, in dance to help dancers communicate and help each other kind of form new choreography, again, without just the communication between their bodies. So we worked in different ways around this. We had sort of, this is 2.0, we had like many iterations of this um, and we were working on different, we are working with different technologies, but this idea of working with the body data in different ways. And uh, over time, we started getting more interested in what are the ethics of the, that data collection and that use of data and the privacy issues. And 
what happens and who owns that data. We're hacking uh, pre-made uh, wearable tech and wearable garments. Who owns the data if we're hacking somebody else's technology? And you know, after some time, it was very clear that those companies do not obviously the people who are generating the data. Um, so we're exploring some of these issues through various iterations of performances and uh, looking at dancers. <clears throat> so this is bespoke garment where there's um, uh, tech, uh, tech threads inside the sleeves and the dancers touch each other and they make different. We've added a sound component because we wanted to bring in the garment, I mean, in the audience, but really we were interested more about the communication between the dancers. To make a performance, you have to also include the audience. So we were trying to, it was a bit of a, an experiment of, of how do they communicate between themselves, how do they communicate with the choreographer, and how do they communicate with the audience. We had a mobile app created as well where we could give it to the audience and they could communicate directly with the dancers and be part of the choreography. Um, so that was interesting, and, and um, we're still thinking, we're, we're wanting to keep working on the, some of these ideas, but in a different way. But she moved to America, and things are crazy over there. It's in Britain as well. So. Um, of course, um, in the meantime, I've done a number of different things as an academic, like writing book chapters um, and books and things like that. But this is the community that I've uh, been running for almost six years, it looks like. Um, initially supported through the v and the Victoria Albert Museum in London. Um, but now we're in another space, which is actually doing a lot more biotech kind of um, and bio art work. Um, but this community is it's not huge. It's about 200 in London, and they don't all come together all the time. But we've sort of spawned some chapters in other locations. And it's really about <coughs> artists and designers sharing what they're doing and developing with each other and, and giving each other workshops and helping each other expand their skill base and get feedback on what they're doing. So it's a really nice community. And uh, yeah. and then I wrote this, co-wrote this book with, or edited it, didn't write this book with my collaborator. And this book was really about um, process, that because a lot of times, especially in, in my world, in academia, um, it's all about outcomes, end results, deadlines, and we wanted to talk a little bit about process, the process of artists and technologists coming together and developing their own techniques and their own ways of, of working and own language. Uh, and so we invited a number of different kinds of art, artists who work with technology to talk about their process and their technique and what does that mean and, and share it. Um, the irony of this is we wanted to make this for artists who weren't in academia, but the privilege priced it so high that unfortunately if you want this book, you either contact me or you get your library to order it because it's too expensive, which is not what we had intended, anyway. Um, and then I got invited to do this slightly different project, which came kind of out of the blue, but I got invited to be part of this um, research team that was about bringing new music into the 21st century. And I mean that exactly as I was saying, because they were, they were these people in the new music community was three curators from Germany and one from Oslo, particularly new music, experimental music, um, but the sort of the high art of new music were feeling that it needed to expand its horizons in terms of its very white male, loud talk, nothing against white males, but this idea that it's not being open enough, open enough, and so they had the four themes of decolonization, gender diversity, expanding curating, and looking at the involvement of technology. So it's a really interesting, it was left field for me because I'm not in, in that world, but it was very interesting. And um, basically I was brought in as the technology expert and we explored many different ways to push this world into another modern era. Um, and some of the results of that are available in another book. And I was involved in a lot of articles. I got found myself again. I what I'm I found is my skill is sitting outside my own comfort zone and sometimes finding myself in new communities and exploring different things. So um, now I'm using that because it seems to work. 
So I'm now somehow connected to fashion and textiles because I was involved in this project. So this is the follow-on spin-off project from E Stitches, which is um, a starts project um, in the end. But I, as I said, it was about ethical and sustainable um, solutions um, in wearable technology and textiles. And the idea is that we gave 60,000 euros to 46 teams in the end to come up with a new way of doing things somewhere in the, the, the cycle of development. So from sourcing materials to manufacturing and everything in between and the end of life. And we're quite strict about I think I had a slide a minute ago. And these were our aims, to build a large network, expand the network, to get people to work across borders and other languages in different ways. Um, to, to create, and we started this process, but we didn't get as far as we'd hoped. We, we wanted to basically to build an AI system that would help artists and designers and, and technological artistic teams to um, help them figure out where to find the resources, the people, the things they need to make an ethical and sustainable e textile and, and wearable technology. We got quite far with this framework, but we didn't get as far as in building an AI. So, where we might still do that. Um, but the other thing was just to kind of push the industry, this is the main idea, was to push the industry to think about how things are made by giving 46 examples of different ways of doing things that are not um, polluting and all the other things. So these were our aims slightly differently um, put forward. I'll give you a second. So we finished in April last year, and we were involved in Ars Electronica, and we had lots of showing all different kinds of projects, and they were literally all over the map, from VR to mushroom-made shoes to you know a, a, a way of making um, like the 3D printers, but for spinning, um, got this, uh, making wool and other kinds of um, textile. So they're really interesting, different kinds of projects, and we made it quite a large community. I think there's 1,500 um, across Europe who are involved, which is sounds like it's not that much, but it's a very niche of a niche, right? It's you know, first we're talking about wearable technologies and textiles, which are kind of not the same group actually, um, and then we're talking about ethical and sustainable. So 1,500 across Europe is actually quite an achievement, um, and now we're trying to sustain that. And I was talking to some earlier about another book that I, I was involved in. This is my baby. And it's really, it came out of my PhD and was reworked. It was this idea of how do we bring in mobile technologies into performance, and because that's my background, music, dance. Um, and so I, I looked at so the theoretical, the theoretical side, but then a vast array of artists who were exploring this in different ways, music, dance, theater, live art, other forms. Um, and bringing not just a mobile phone, but when I say mobile, I mean, you know, literally, it could be wearables, it could be it could be many different presentations. So I'm just going to show quick slides of some of the projects that I looked at. And some of them are evolving, so, uh, you know, they'll be continuing, maybe I'll have to do a follow-up and see what other people are doing since then. Um, and different ways of using AR or, like I said, range of different things. I'm just showing the more relevant ones to this group, but there was many more. Many more. Um, stop. There we go. Okay, it's stuck probably because there's a video on this one. So we come to starts, and I don't know if it's play, but we'll see. Okay. Sound on here, is that? So I'll just turn it up on my computer. 
It's a promo. trajectory that I'm kind of one of the few people who's been at the beginning. It's eight years now and ten projects or something, each around two or three million. And the idea of the Starts ecosystem is then to put all of these activities that have been happening over this period under one umbrella and to bring every one of you, anyone who's working in this area together and to, to be able to find each other and explore and collaborate and do things together and get support um, and yeah be able to share what you're doing so that that's the, the idea and the point is is that instead of having things disparate and in different pockets and all on their own that we can find a way to bring people together community um, yeah, so what this shows is the beginning of where it started and what it's doing, some of the projects. I didn't get a good slide for the for your project actually. <laughs> I had uh, I had this. Um, but you will be able to talk about that more. But what I was going to show you is where we are now. So DigiConnect is the is the part of the European Commission that sort of initiated this activity. Here are the, the sort of the, I guess now, start ecosystem that is involved in trying to bring everyone together, the sub projects and the activities. So I was talking to somebody else earlier. The, initi the newest one we're initiating is this idea of trying to bring people together, but also um, reach young people. And because not all, everyone is getting this kind of connection between art and technology in school, maybe no one is. I know in the UK it's. Technology and science over here and art over here. So this idea of giving young people this integration at an earlier stage. And then I, I'm sure many of you know about our electronics that they manage the Starts Prize. Um, the lighthouses are the ones I just briefly talked about. Um, Reframe and Mind Spaces. And Reframe is really about exploring ways to push fashion designers um, to explore different types of either manufacturing or sustainability or ways of doing their design. I'll let Alejandro explain my spaces because I'm still not 100%. I know something to do with VR and architectural space and other dimensions of psychological space. I'll let him discuss that because I'm still not getting <coughs> The residencies, uh, it was called Vertigo, um, it's nearly finished now, but it was bringing artists into <coughs> technology companies and to find the collaboration in that space. And so here are the sort of names of those projects and then little bits of the areas. We strangely ended up with a couple of fashion-based textiles and it just 
sort of turned out that way. But that's a really, it is a very interesting space where a lot of innovation and, and collaboration is happening. And just briefly, this sort of time trajectory. I'm going to build a slightly more sophisticated version of this, but that we're on this journey and it started one event some time ago and it's continuing onward. Some of the things that I'm doing in my personal practice, just quickly, I'm a new uh, chapter coming out. I've got quite a lot more, I, I would say, political, I guess, about the issues around uh, data and you know, some of the, some of the excited engineers out there are wanting to you know embed technologies and the EU talks about, about having to, to put chips in our bodies in different places and I'm not interested in that very much. So I've written a, a, a chapter about how we can find ways of working with data in, in different ways, more ethical ways. I've also recently just been funded to do, I guess it's cutting off, but uh, a project that's an immersive um, immersive experience that's not necessarily VR, though we're working with VR, but it's kind of more of a mixed reality, exploring the, the, um, some of the experiences that women go through in their lives that's, that are not discussed and create a place where women can discuss these issues of you know, horrible kinds of um, physical experiences, whether they be smaller growths or um, endometriosis, if some of you know what that is. It's, uh, cells that grow in places they shouldn't and cause a lot of pain and cancers and so I think there's been a lot of excitement about the women I've talked to in the UK and I'm getting involved with an organization called Femtech and so the, this idea of finding new ways to explore technology for women that has not been developed in the past so I'm working on that and I'm also in the middle of uh, working developing, developing a project around there's a call in the UK about called Living with Climate Uncertainty, and it's about having artists lead um, engagement with communities around supporting um, grief and loss and uh, misunderstanding about what's happening with the planet and trying to help people to find some resilience in that uncertainty, not to find solutions necessarily, but get them involved in making some action and change and doing something. So this is also an immersive experience project, and it's and this is the in 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 the back on the back burner, but coming and it's taking this the project that I had done, I had done for my PhD and trying to bring it to the twenty first century in, in terms of exploring ways of, of live um, performance interaction um, using VR and um, the network. So that one's still getting ready to get started. And I just probably talked far too long. It's 20 minutes, it says, is that too long? <laughs> there we are, so that's me.